Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Objects dialog box which is essentially a souped up version of the Layers dialog box giving us a hierarchical view of everything that makes up our project. Stay tuned and we'll take a look. So at the moment I've got our Layers dialog box open on the right hand side um, this is a very simplistic look at the layout of our project. It purely shows layers, so we can toggle the visibility of the layers on and off just to see what we've got. So I've split this project up into three distinct layers. Like I say, we're, we're very limited on what we can do with this dialog box. So we're going to open up the Objects dialog box. So if we come up to the top, up to Object, click on Object, and then you've got Objects directly underneath. Click on this to open up your dialog box. Now you can instantly see there's quite a big difference between what we're presented with in the Objects dialog box and the Layers dialog box. Um, we can still toggle visibility of our layers and lock layers, but we've got a lot more information and we've got this hierarchical layout that splits it down into groups, paths, rectangles, text, giving us a lot more possibilities of what we can do. So let's just quickly run through what the different columns are here. So firstly we've got visibility so we can toggle the visibility of layers, we can toggle the visibility of individual items like text or paths and we can toggle groups so they're all there. Uh, the second column is gives us the ability to lock items so for example, if we locked layer one, we can no longer move it. So we've grabbed things that are underneath layer one. Again, you can lock individual items, groups, layers, all possible. The next column is type. So the three layers indicates a layer. The ABC with a single layer underneath indicates a single item like text, path or predefined shape and what else have we got groups groups two layers with the top one uh, color yellow that indicates a group with the type we can toggle between if we click on a layer we can change it to a group and likewise with a group we can change it to a layer the only thing I don't really like about this is if we toggle uh, layer 3 to be a group when we go into the layers dialog box it's disappeared so now we've got these these items here that don't appear to be in our project so i prefer working with the objects dialog box and i tend to leave the object types as they are so the next column along is cm for clipping and masking so this just indicates whether your item is clipped or masked if it's got a colored square on the image then this indicates that it's a mask. So you can think of color makes a difference to a mask. We can graduate our color to change the opacity of what we're masking. If the square is white, then it just indicates that it's clipped. So if we toggle this on and off, it should be a circle. And if we toggle the masked um, item on and off, it's the triangle. So the next column along is HL for highlight. This uh, shows the color of the path so if we grab our nodes tool and just run our cursor across a path we can see the color of the path appear which is red as indicated in the highlight but we can change this so we could for example have um, different colors for our different layers or you might just want an individual item or a group to be a different color so to change it we're going to come up to the layer layer one and we get presented with a box when we left click on it. To change it, we need to increase the opacity in the alpha channel. So if we turn that right up, we can now change the color. So we could turn it to green, for example. If you change the color of the layer, it would change the color of all the different items in that layer. So now if we hover over items that are on a layer, hold on, sorry, let's get rid of that. We hover over items that are in layer one you can now see that they turn green so our highlight for layer one is green we could do the same again we could change layer three 
let's click on layer 3 we just change this to blue so increase the opacity right up and then we just drag our cursor along so we've got actually we go for pale blue so it stands out so now if we get rid of the box we can oops sorry we should better hover over it to get our our path color pop up just quickly if you click on a, a predefined shape uh, like an ellipse it doesn't show the color of the path but if we go up to path object to path and convert it to a path then we get the highlighted path color so that's highlight colors like i say you can you can also change individual colors so we could click on this increase the opacity right up and then we could change that to yellow for example and it would change the text highlight color to yellow if we go back reduce the opacity down and it will change back to green and if you click onto one of the layers highlights if we reduce the opacity back down I'll get hold of it then it resets everything back to the default color of red so that's highlights the next column along is label now if you've watched the video on layers you can right click and rename layers so we can rename our layers here but this doesn't work we right click on text for example all we've got is rename layer which is layer one so all it'll do is rename the layer so to rename individual items and groups we're going to come up to object and down to object properties this will open up another dialog box and this gives us the options to add a few different things we've got id label uh, you can add a title or description uh, we've got lock and hide uh, down the bottom we have interactivity this just gives you options if you're making something for a website for example so you can have what happens when you click it what happens when you roll your mouse over it um, we'll leave that for the time being so if we go back to our objects dialog box you can see that the title of the column is label so if we want to rename something we want to change the label name so at the moment we've got the text selected so we can just change that we can change it to capital text so um, so we just change that to text we can set it now if we go back to the objects dialog box we've renamed the label to text so this is quite handy when you've got a lot of um, components making up your project it's a nice way to distinguish between different different items so that's all the items that make up the different columns of our dialog box uh, we've got similar things to the layers dialog box we've we can add and subtract a layer we've got the move items up and down the stack we've got blend mode we've got the blur and opacity options um, we've also got an additional one this is collapse all so if we click on this it collapses all the different layers and groups down except the one you're on so we just click on that you can see layers have stayed open but everything else has collapsed down so we can also collapse this down by clicking on the triangle so we're just back to layers so what can we do with um, the dialog box what, what useful features have we got so let's just open these up again so we can see what we've got in our different different layers um, like I said before we can lock individual items we can um, toggle the visibility this comes in handy for example this uh, ellipse I've reduced the opacity so if we click on it you can see the items underneath but we can't select them because all we're selecting is what, what's what's on the top layer so let's just undo that oh by the way without the um, objects dialog box if you wanted to cycle through the different items that are at a particular point so say here we've got the text on top then we've got the oval then we've got the long rectangle and then we've got the square behind that if we hold down the alt key it selects the ellipse if we click again it selects the uh, long rectangle and if we click again it selects the square so we can rotate through the different layers and different objects at that point by holding down the alt key so if we wanted to move the rectangle behind layer one so this long yellow rectangle we can't actually grab it and move it because all we do is grab what's on top 
I've shown you how you can select it by toggling through with the Alt key, but this doesn't give us the ability to grab it and move it. So what we can do, we can either toggle the visibility of the things above it off, like so, and then we can just move it. But we can also lock the items above it. So then when we try and select, we select the first unlocked and visible item in the stack. So now everything's visible, but we can grab the individual items. Likewise, we can lock that rectangle and we better grab the rectangle behind. So this means we can line up and perfect our projects without accidentally dragging other items. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more insight on the different things you can do with the objects dialog box and just how um, useful it is to see you get a visible representation of how you've grouped things, the layout. You can actually come up here if you wanted to group items up here. You could hold down shift, select the items, and then you could go up and group them. So it creates a group. So it just gives you a more visible representation of what you've done with your project. Sometimes you group things and you don't know exactly what's grouped with what. Um, if it's nested, you've got a group within a group within a group. It, it can become very confusing, but with this nice, neat, hierarchical layout that you get with the objects dialog box, it makes everything a lot clearer. So I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.